Hi everyone. So today you will study about the orthogonal coordinate systems, uh, and let's see why we need to study such kind of the systems. That is actually the second part of the vector analysis. You can see my first lecture where I have actually explained the vector algebra, and this is the second part of the vector analysis. Uh, so let's just start. In electromagnetics, the physical quantities we deal with are in general functions of the space and time okay a three dimensional coordinate system allows us to uniquely specify the location of a point in a space or the direction of a vector quantity coordinate systems may be orthogonal or non orthogonal an orthogonal coordinate system is one whose coordinates are mutually perpendicular to each other whereas in a non orthogonal system not all the three coordinates are mutually perpendicular some of them may be perpendicular or other than can have can be at a certain angle non orthogonal systems are very specialized and seldom used in solving the practical problems many orthogonal coordinate systems have been devised but the most standard and the commonly used are the cartesian coordinate system which is also known as the rectangular coordinate system okay the second one is the cylindrical coordinate system and the third one is the spherical coordinate system all right why do we need more than word coordinate system this question may arise uh, while studying these uh, systems where as a point in a space has the same location and an object has the same shape regardless of which specific coordinate system is used to describe that the solution of a given practical problem can be greatly facilitated by the proper choice of the coordinate systems that best fits the geometry of the problem hence in the following subsections or in the following topic i will explain each coordinate system individually but let me quote more examples for representing the significance of the coordinate systems the general expressions of the laws of the electromagnetism do not uh, require the specification of the coordinate systems a particular coordinate system is chosen only when a problem of a given geometry is to be analyzed for example if we are to determine the magnetic field at the center of a current carrying wire loop so let's say if you are having a current carrying wire loop and you want to determine the magnetic field at the center of it so then it is more convenient to use the rectangular coordinate system if the loop is the rectangular but since it is of the circular form so the polar coordinates in 2d would be much more appropriate and other example uh, that is if we are to determine the electric field at a certain point in the space we at least need to describe the position of the source and the location of this point in a coordinate system so in a 3d space a point can be located at as the intersection of the three surfaces when these three surfaces are mutually perpendicular to one and other we will have the orthogonal coordinate systems all right i think this much information is enough for understanding the significance of the coordinate system so let's start with the first coordinate system that is the cartesian coordinate system okay the cartesian coordinate system was introduced many many years ago all right and you know that it is actually composed of the three axes that are called x y and z axis and you can see all of them are at the angle of 90 degree all right if we want to represent a particular point in the rectangular coordinate system what you need to do this point will have a its certain projection in the plane formed by x and y and then this point will have a specific height 
that is represented by the length of z so in this way you can denote the point when you will join this point p with the origin you will get the position vector op all right we also call this position vector or represent it with the vector r and this vector r is actually equal to x a x hat plus y a y hat plus z a z hat x y z are the scalar projections of this vector r on all the three axes and if a x a y and a z are the scalar projections of a and can be written as the summation of their components so a x a x hat plus a y a y hat plus a z a z hat and we know that there are the unit vectors associated to each axis that is denoted by a x a y and a z hat fine now let's just study about the differential length if a point that was pla placed at the origin is displaced from the origin and it is placed at this certain point in the space formed by the axis x y and z then this length is called the differential length and this differential length is actually equal to ax d x plus a y d y plus d z a z hat all right what does it mean let's be more clear about this let's say we have placed this point and given this a distance of dx unit along the x axis similarly if we travel or give a distance or displace this point along the y axis the distance dl similarly if we displace this point from the origin and move it along the z axis with the length dl then the resultant vector can be obtained by joining all these projections and this is this gives us the distance of this point from the origin so that's why differential length starting from the origin is given as dx ax hat plus dy ay hat plus dz az hat all right now let's study about the different surfaces formed in the plane x y and z so this is my x axis this is y axis and this is z axis if you take a point and you just lie in the x z plane and move from this position to this and this position to this then you get a surface and you can represent the dimension of this surface as dx change in the length along the x axis and then change in the length along the z axis then the area of this surface is the product of dx and dz and it is pointing in the direction of y axis on okay so you can write it as a y hat similarly if you were in the x y plane and you move along the y axis given the differential length dy and then along the x axis given the differential length dx then you can see this is actually dy change along the y axis and this is the change along the x axis and this area is pointing upward so area that points in the direction of z 
x is will be equal to dx into dy fine and similarly if you move along the z axis and then move along the y axis then you get again a differential surface whose area actually points towards the x axis and its value can be determined as dx hat this its value is equal to dy into dz so area along the sorry area along the ax hat is will have the value dy into dz and the volume that is formed by combining all these surfaces will be equal to the product of dx into dy and dz so let's just be more specific let's say if we are having this these are my axis of the coordinate system and we introduce a change along x axis dx dy and dz then you can see we will get what is formed actually you can see clearly this is actually this actually forms a cube and the volume of the cube will be equal to the product of each length so you can see this length is actually equal to dx this is change along the y axis and this is change along the z axis so the volume of a cube in the cartesian coordinate system will be equal to dx dy and dz all right so we can point these areas as ds y similarly this will be equal to d ds x hat and this will be equal to what sorry the second area this will be equal to ds z hat and so on all right so this was all about the cartesian coordinate system that is very simple to understand